What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about protein. How much should you have in a meal? Uh, this started because I saw a uh, post on a guy named Jackson Pios's uh, Instagram and Jackson is a really really smart guy he's doing his PhD at the University of Western Australia and he kind of reviews a lot of different studies on his Instagram this one I found particularly interesting it's out of Robert Wolf's lab and for most of you won't know but uh, Dr. Wolf is one of the foremost protein researchers in the world if you've been following me for any period of time you know that I've addressed myths like the idea you can only absorb so much protein in a meal we know that's complete BS you can absorb basically however much protein you eat in a meal as long as it's a bioavailable source of protein but there does seem to be a maximal anabolic cap to a meal insofar as once you get past a certain point uh, you don't further stimulate muscle protein synthesis and this amount appears to be anywhere from 25 to 50 grams a day depending on the source of protein and its leucine content Dr. Wolf's lab did a study back in 2016 where they said well you know is that really the anabolic cap because if you're only looking at protein synthesis you are neglecting the other area of protein metabolism which is protein breakdown theoretically the net accrual of tissue is going to be your rate of protein synthesis minus your rate of protein breakdown I talk about this in terms of fat loss um, you know in terms of your net fat loss or gain is going to be how much fat you store minus how much fat you burn messing with either ends of that equation can change the net balance same thing with protein if you are at um, a net balance of like say zero um, and you decrease protein breakdown but don't change protein synthesis theoretically you should accrue new tissue likewise if you increase synthesis but don't change breakdown you should accrue new tissue or if you increase for example both um, but you increase one more than the other it can affect the equation so hopefully you guys uh, kind of understand how that works now what's really interesting was they wanted to test okay we're going to measure muscle protein synthesis in response to uh, two meals uh, one which is going to be around the anabolic cap for muscle protein synthesis and another one that far exceeds it they looked at like about 35 grams of protein versus another meal at 70 grams of protein and they were going to assess uh, muscle protein synthesis and whole body protein metabolism meaning they're looking at whole body protein synthesis whole body protein breakdown and whole body protein kinetics and net balance now the way they do this uh, for muscle protein synthesis you use a, a, a tracer a stable isotope tracer like D5-phenylalanine which I believe is what they use in the study basically with this tracer you can uh, essentially observe where that amino acid is going if you're using something like a GC mass uh, spectroscopy unit then for the whole body protein synthesis a whole body protein breakdown whole body net balance they used a different label uh, I believe it was stable isotope tyrosine and you're going to look at the rate of appearance of that label versus the rate of disappearance for that label I know there's a lot of technical terms and stuff but what they found was that even though muscle protein synthesis was capped at the 35 gram meal meaning they didn't get a bigger increase in muscle protein synthesis from the 70 gram meal versus the 35 gram meal whole body net protein balance was significantly greater by about 58% compared to fasting in the 70 gram protein group so I mean people look at that and they go well we should be eating like at least 70 grams of protein per meal right like 58% more anabolism like why aren't we doing that the problem with thinking that way is that whole body protein synthesis or a whole body protein metabolism is driven far more by what's going on in gut and liver tissues compared to muscle tissue because gut and liver can turn over anywhere from 30 to 80 percent per day whereas skeletal muscle only turns over about one percent per day in humans the contribution of the rate of appearance or rate of disappearance of these labels these labeled amino acids that they're tracing is going to be much more highly influenced by gut and liver turnover and we see this with some other studies where like for example they look at whey protein versus casein casein is better for whole body protein synthesis and um, net protein balance whereas whey is better for muscle protein synthesis you know so I don't really think that we can extrapolate those results in the whole body to what's going on in the muscle that's a pretty big leap I think that if we want to measure this we really got to measure muscle protein breakdown the problem is measuring muscle protein breakdown is very difficult perhaps one of the best ways to do it is what's called arteriovenous balance uh, studies 
where they're basically, you're looking at a label, uh, a labeled amino acid that's being infused and it's going into an artery. And then you also are, have a blood sample that's coming out of a vein out of the same muscle bed, okay? Ideally, you could look at that and see how much label is going in versus how much is coming out. And that's gonna tell you the net balance. But those studies are very, very hard to do. And it, it, there's a lot involved uh, that's honestly kind of hard to describe. I personally have never done those studies. Mine were all looking at muscle protein synthesis. But in general, based on the current data we have, it appears that muscle protein distribution does make a difference. And we see this in not only my research that was done in animals, but there are some human studies that show that protein distribution does appear to make a difference. So it doesn't appear that you can like overeat one big meal with protein to make up for low protein intake in other meals. Because the other thing that's happened is some people um, in the fasting community have seen information like this and said, see, we can just eat one really massive protein meal and we're, get, we're still getting much more bang for our buck because it's inhibiting muscle protein breakdown. We don't know that. It's, it's creating more whole body protein balance, but that doesn't really tell us anything about what's going on in the actual muscle tissue itself. So too long didn't read is, it still appears there's a maximal anabolic cap in muscle. Um, and if you want to maximize your anabolic response on the daily, it's probably wise to consume multiple meaning probably three to five high quality, high protein meals per day with about 30 to 50 grams of protein, depending upon the source. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, click like, subscribe to the channel, click the links in the description, go check out some of my educational material, my nutrition coaching app, and my new supplement line, Outwork Nutrition. Hope you guys have a great week. I'll catch you next week.